five schools in Central Texas that have been composting. Um, uh, at least 85 of them more, for more than um, two years now. And so these are some of the results that um, we're gonna take it very neutral and explain how it will adapt to any other program. Now here is the overview of my presentation. Basically, I wanna you know, resolve the basic questions and then uh, based on the NRDC uh, guide for events at, um, at venues, sports venues, we're gonna do a, an adaptation for composting at schools. And then um, if there is time, I will uh, share my uh, EPA food hierarchy adapted to schools. But if there is not, there is some handouts here for anybody interested. Can you raise your hand if you work or uh, participate or have kids in schools and might be interested in uh, school composting? <laughs> Great. Now, um, these are very basic, so maybe you know them, but let me just go through it very quickly. Um, it's very important that there is leadership among the district uh, and that there is um, involvement within the facilities department, the principal of every school, and the assistant principals. Because if this uh, comes from one person in, let's say, the facilities department that is saving some money by doing some composting or some recycling, and they don't necessarily involve the principals in every school, this is not going to work. They, they run their house. <laughs> so it's very important when you're approaching every single school in your district that you um, make sure that it, um, it's in line with the vision and the mission of the school. And let me just um, step back a little bit here because I think it's a very touchy um, topic. Uh, these are micro universes where you're getting into comp you know, composting, whether it comes from the outside or the inside. All these people want to do good for their school. I still don't know anybody in any of these positions that don't want to improve kids' lives, you know? <coughs> so acknowledging that and taking the time to uh, get them on board and saying that you know, you're not disrupting their system because they know better how the school flows in the cafeteria or how to do things in their school, it's so important. So that's one of the uh, highlights for this line. And then it really helps when uh, once you get them on, on board, you know, um, naming a composting committee inside of the school. And the most important people to be in this composting committee are not necessarily the student groups or the uh, sponsor teacher, because there's always a green teacher that wants this for the whole school. But you really <laughs> need to get in, <laughs> in board the head custodian and the cafeteria manager, because these two people are absolutely key. And sometimes they even might garden in their house, or they have a grandmother in their garden, but the connection between um, the composting in the school uh, for them is, is this gonna cost me extra time extra personnel, uh, you're giving me a hard time on my school. So it's really um, a romancing, transformational thing that you have to approach them and integrating them in a committee uh, improves their uh, status in their school and you know they're more valued by, by all the schools. So it's really important to, to do this if you can. Now let's talk about the students' participation. In uh, this, 70% um, of the schools where I visit, um, there was a line, and I'll show you a couple pictures, where the kids come with the tray and the custodians or the lunch monitors or anybody else in, in charge on the adult side do it for the students. So they're not really involved in the process, but in the other 30% of the schools that were very successful and had less of the problems of contamination, I had uh, the time and the effort to educate the students to personally do it. And again, this is a lot of logistics in terms of what their school curriculum is and the time of every single day, which every single uh, minute comes for the professors. But if they were able to, uh, uh, you know, approve the program to include a couple more minutes of the cafeteria time, because it does take them at least 10 more seconds per student to sort everything with patience, um, then everybody wins. And a, a reason to think about this is, um, as part of their education, you know, a lot of the missions of these schools say that they want to create thriving, great citizenships in the world that have all the skills to confront society and the future that they face outside of the school. But the reality out there is completely different than all the teachers had when they were kids, and you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, trying to get the teachers involved and all the um, people that monitor the lunches to. <coughs> take the opportunity to dispose their tray as those 10 seconds of education that will, you know, they, they're all gonna, gonna continue eating for the rest of their lives. So it's a very important educational thing. And now about um, the stewards. There is a, a few students that already have leadership positions at lunchtime. You know, they clean the table 
or they are trying to help. Um, and so some of these kids that are, have this kind of personality or interest in the program uh, are very easily adapted into monitoring the beans at the time of disposal. It's a very much better received um, you know, education um, tip from one student of fifth grade and another student of third grade or fourth grade is telling them what to do than a professor that um, they're not as close to. So a, a peer to peer process with the stewards at the monitoring station is really, really key. Uh, and it, it proved very beneficial. Now talking about the custodians, um, not only considering for the lining, you know, with the plastic bags and the composting bags at the, at the containers and then transferring to the dumpsters, but also considering the, co the composting and zero waste ambassadors, if you do have a zero waste program in the school. Some of them uh, that are really involved and like, um, you know, best practices, they even have a tag. And so they're like the compost kings, because it's really about, um, you know, their pride on it, on it that um, makes the program uh, thrive. If you don't have a head custodian that is involved, or even one custodian that is at the end of the turn and is not involved in the program, that could make a lot of contamination and your program do not succeed, even if all the steps of the, of the system are working. Uh, now about the teachers and the administrative staff, um, it's very important for the continuous education of the kids, because every time they go during a holiday or a summer break, they forget. And so um, it's important to reinforce it. They will remember very quickly, but it's, it's key. And then there is a lot of uh, need for coherence in offices and teacher lounges, because they might do this in the cafeteria, but why will we do it in the, in the lounge? Uh, you know? And so it's, in, if you have students that are uh, third grade and up, they're more likely to end up looking at the teacher lounge for one reason or the other. And if they see that you don't walk the walk, um, you know, how will you face it? And then the parents. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for lunch monitors and lunch uh, visitors. Because when the, the parents come to spend time with their kids, they get to see the system. And um, oftentimes, these students are not necessarily you know, composting at home. So this is a great time. And if they are composting at home, this is a great time to have this conversation of why meat goes in the school program versus not at home, this kind of thing. Um, also, the parents that are very involved in the schools, they're also the uh, ones that are uh, potentially going to help you with other green programs and zero waste programs uh, that you might want to run. So here are a few pictures of some of the best cases that we had the opportunity to visit around these districts. This is from Hayes um, Independent School District. And this kitchen manager even came with a, a, you know, a little uh, post service box uh, to increase their composting uh, locations around the kitchen. And this is, I'm just going to put a few of these examples to uh, show you how motivated these people are. This is the uh, composting and zero waste ambassadors of some of the high schools. And you see that they all not only do uh, composting, but also zero waste. They have um, convinced the district to leave this um, free for grabs table that um, uh, also reduces the waste that comes down to the composting bin, which is like one of the other best practices I found. And it, it's just, you know, I just wanted to share some of the pictures because this is what um, makes this less boring and more <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, professor um, invented an accountability program uh, for the students to um, evaluate other classrooms. So fifth graders go around the other classrooms and give a grading to the other students, uh, to the other teachers. So they're actually grading the classroom, but they're really, uh, the accountability for those grades, either a happy face or a frowny face, uh, um, it, it's going to um, um, give a, a positive consequence potentially to the uh, professor. So if the second grade professor has only happy faces throughout the week of the fifth grader evaluator, then they get to uh, um, have a, I think it's a bring jeans to school on Fridays or something like that, that they, they create their own incentives. Um, and that really keeps the teachers motivated and the, the, the students interested in accountability. And then there's other programs that complement um, the during time hours, like the Keep Us in Beautiful programs here. They have a, a green uh, teens program that also um, in a little, it, you know, this is more in middle school and, and high school. They teach them about composting and it, it's more um, focused on science and they get to um, monitor the on-site on pile in some of these middle school, schools and high schools. And then even further, 
some of the professors and teachers that I was mentioning uh, make a, a programs with TerraCycle and other projects like that um, that uh, go, come down to this. Even. All these schools collect even cell phone batteries and all these other things. But this is going down the line in your zero waste approach. I just wanted to put them as an example. Now, where to compost and what? And it's important to make the differentiation between, uh, you know, front of the line, back of the line, but also uh, classrooms and hallways. So let me just go very quickly with this uh, um, and making emphasis in the importance of the number of beans you have in the school. The color coding is basic and uh, the signage because if these are coherent around the school and that they're very clear and consistent, then the message goes through. Uh, the human mind needs to uh, see a message at least seven times to uh, get it clear. And, um, and so that this is why it's so important. And so for the cafeteria, you know, there is some uh, the dilemma in different districts according to uh, how to handle milk and liquids, but um, the best practice for sure is three designs. Um, and I'll show those in a minute. In the kitchen, in addition of the food scraps, one of the most important things to consider is that all paper towels and parchment paper is compostable. In the classrooms and hallways, this is the biggest area of opportunity for Central Texas and I think all the other districts that have been already composted for a few years. The breakfast and the after school programs are not necessarily considered when you start a composting program. And so that's the next layer that um, you can expand your program into. And also one that if you're not carefully planning for will contaminate your entire collection. And then the paper towels, if you have some things where they only wash their hands, and you have, you know, your program build up to a moment where you can also collect these. And then the outdoor and community areas, um, especially if you have a, spe a special uh, social community event locations. So here are a few pictures about what I'm talking about, color coding and signage, and uh, that definitely helps for proper diversion. And then on middle schools and high schools, it's all about time. They, they will do it if they make it easy for that, and if they have the time. So the dual bin system where when they are done with their food, you know, they do just uh, dismiss themselves and then they just walk on one side or the other, they'll do it very easily, even if they don't have the best color coding, but if it's, you know, if it flows. And so that is definitely key as, uh, with the elder kids. This is one of the um, solutions that I found in some of the districts when they really don't want to include the milk um, on their uh, composting operation because it makes it heavier or it attracts some maggots. Uh, they separate the milk and they make the skis or the people that are helping pouring out. Um, but there is um, other school districts that decide to include the closed carton milks or the partially, you know, to increase their um, tonnages. So it really depends what your district is going for. Are you wanting to maximize your tonnage for composting? and you're able to manage liquids, then you might want to do that. Or if you, your district uh, health and requirements require to separate it, then you might have to come up with some alternative solutions. Now, how? The most important lesson after BCD in all these schools 